Dude, I would never go to a Chuck E. Cheese again. Generic control in the deck goes, we are back with another Game 3 FNAF video. Today we're doing FNAF, another mystery solve. Now, some people told me to skip this video, but a lot of people told me not to skip this video. Apparently, this is going to be a pretty debunked video, but we're along for the journey to see what the thought process has been through the information that we've been given through the entire story of FNAF so far. This is before, I believe, Security Breach came out, which we're actually a couple videos away from. You can check out last week's video, however, which was a Science of FNAF video. It was the Psychic video i'll leave it right up there also you can be linked down below in the description also go to play this on my channel with all of my other fnaf game theory videos going in chronological order now those videos are actually unlisted on the game theory channel so you can't really find them unless you have a playlist which there are my playlists and they're also linked in the description just like this video will be as well also shout out to the patrons because they get the videos day early allow me to have a paywall on the channel i could not do this if it was not for them i really could not do this if it was not for them they allow me to not have a paywall i'm completely against paywalls a lot of reactors put paywalls out on their stuff they don't even upload that many videos but three dollars a month get you all of my reaction videos for the entire month of day early and i do 17 videos a week three of them involving my best friend kirby right now so it's i've always kept at that price i'm here to make you smile not make you pay i'm trying to buy a house actually here in the near future and then my videos will get so much better my oh my god my videos are gonna get so much better God, that, that's my goal right now. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm also trying to get 100,000 subscribers by the end of this year. So if I get 100,000 subscribers this year, we're just at 70. And if I could buy a house this year, oh my God, things would be crazy. I still live at home with my parents. I'm almost 26. But let's go ahead and jump into FNAF, another mystery solved. And also, I read every single comment. Also, we live streamed at 5 p.m. today. Playing some Pokemon White 2. It's a Nuzlocke. It's rough. I got Absol last week. Also, check out the Markiplier Smasher Pass Game Theory video I dropped yesterday. Been recorded after this one. You can be a pirate, but first you'll have to lose an eye and an arm. You can be a pirate. You have to an eye and an arm. What about a leg? What about a peg leg? I don't like. I don't, well, actually, you, you don't want my eyes. I am very blind. Okay, now the arm, yeah, now I uh, know. I, I like my arms. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, the show that is, without exaggeration, thinking of reaching out to Scott Cawthon so that we can you jointly have. buy Chuck E. Cheese's quickly dying restaurant franchise so we can transform Chuck them into what restaurant. they were always meant to be, real-world FNAF experiences. Heck, they've already so. got the terrible pizza taken care of. We could probably even sell the idea to YouTube Originals and make a whole series about transforming the pizzerias into horror-themed dining experiences. That would be kind of cool. help mitigate the cost of doing all that. No joking here, Scott. This is something we Flip my pizzeria. Probably should do. I've recreated your games before. I reacted in real life to this. They seem to be pretty well received. So between my theater background and your well, you know, a theater background, of money and masterminding of the IP, I think we can make something that's really cool. And yeah, what is the reason Scott's I'm bringing it up here is so fans are talking about the idea both here and on Reddit to show you how excited Chucky they cheese. are for this to happen. Chucky anyway, still let exists. me just leave it at. You have my email. I eagerly await your response. Who knows? You've probably already bought it at this point. You're just waiting to reveal that fact to the world. Speaking yeah. of <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese restaurants, dude, I would never go to a Chuck E. Cheese snap, again. I actually have a theory in the works about those pizzerias that any if FNAF you, fan will enjoy. If it came out to Scott Cawthorn, in the next few weeks on my bought, newest theory channel, Food Theory, no. which if you haven't checked out yet, you totally should. Link I have a food down reaction channel. Me yes, trying food for the like first joke. time. No, it's not. We've not only got I mean, I'm recording this on Chuck April Fool's, so. Way, but also horror episodes like how the ghost of KFC's Colonel Sanders has been cursing people for decades. Yes, it is a real thing that we are currently researching. It's the same science, what? math, and over-research that we do over I'm probably going to do the you know, Minecraft real theory topics. videos. And for anyone who's hesitant to check out a channel about food, we're already winning people over. Like Jack here over on Twitter who said he started out skeptical, but watched the episodes and immediately Why? Got the why concept. would anybody We've doubt over that? A what? million subscribers in the first 24 hours. And we're That's insane. Really, really close to that million in these first two weeks. On so July 30th, please, we had a million in a week. reach that milestone in record time. Show the world wow. how passionate we theorists are also, by wait, shattering we that are subscriber record. One month away from the three anniversary 
my channel getting deleted. On the show. It's in I gotta start right back over. Here I am. Theory. So subscribe 70, to Foodfans today to get your daily dose of brain what? food. In a sucky, sucky, no good, awful year, seeing so many people excited about this new channel Wait. has really helped us all out. So thank you guys for your support. Okay. Thank you for your subscription. So this I is when I was rebuilding this more. channel. It's been a lot of work, but it's really fun. All right. A new month, a new FNAF book, a new okay. set of lore reveals. Earlier this a new month, book. the latest Fazbear Fright book stepped closer it's to the about Foxy. And even though it has a super forgettable name, the stories inside of it are epic. Not just because they're some of the most gruesome in the series. I mean, page one literally starts with a dream sequence where a kid's eye gets popped by Foxy's hook. But yeah. because of the Is lore it because drops he missing an eye? He wants everybody thing. to look they like him? They are huge. Up until this point, the Fazbear Frights books have given us interesting concepts to chew on. Well, parallels. the world of FNAF and giving us new insights into events that we already had a pretty good handle on. It's yeah. been useful, certainly, but nothing too earth-shattering. Animatronics can have people I mean, some of this stuff's been a little earth-shattering. Right in book one. People can have animatronics stuffed inside of them. Until they explode. in book three. Everything is powered by human agony. The missing children's incident probably happened in 1985. Animatronics can steal identities. Humans can be body swapped with animatronics. Yeah. Golden Freddy might have multiple souls. Oh, there's nothing that major? Like really? Escape from their animatronic prisons to lure more people to them. Like, there has been a lot across all of these stories, hence why I've been covering these books so much. But Step Closer's lore drops are attacking the, some of the, the cover's pretty sick. questions still in existence from these games. The ones presented to us by the two most frustrating games in the franchise, FNAF 4 and FNAF 6. Questions that Why? are still hotly debated by the FNAF community. So Mike's today we're victim. looking at the first of those debates, oh. the ones related to FNAF 4, and looking at what those answers mean for the rest of the series. Today, we confirm the identity I... of this guy, the older oh. brother, Foxy Bro. Real quick though, I feel like the that theory might be completely wrong. Speed our way through because the least apparently there's new trio, some the stuff in this episode that are dancer. completely wrong. In it, we cover Casey. A young woman who's coming from a tragic childhood. She lives on the street, picking pockets and nabbing purses. One day, she robs a mother and a young girl outside of Circus Baby's Pizza World, which we're told oh. has itself a big red door. Woo! Potentially what? important detail alert. Anyway, one of the items oh. that she nabs is a set of cardboard glasses. When Casey puts them on, she sees a hologram of Ballora spinning in the distance. Weirded out by this, she has other people try the glasses on, and, and no one it. else manages to see Ballora. From that point onward, each time she puts on the glasses, the hologram get gets closer, closer and Stop closer, putting them on! She begins to freak her out to the point of her leaving town and trying to put her life back together in hopes that it gets Ballora to leave her alone. A couple cities and failed jobs later, Casey eventually decides to return the stolen item. How did you the find them? The daughter, hoping that it'll make amends. The family welcomes her in and forgives her, but when the little girl Isabella puts the glasses on, she not only sees Ballora, but she immediately begins dancing. And turns into it's Ballora? A big okay. It's unclear whether Let's Ballora, see, who was one step away from getting Casey, instead nabs the girl because she's the one who puts the glasses on next, and the dancing is the girl becoming she possessed, set her up. or if it's the girl just excited to be dancing alongside one of her favorite characters, Ballora. Anyway, there's not a whole lot to talk about with this one. The technology is super strange. Freddy's is apparently uh, advanced cardboard enough to glasses. have holographics that work in cheap cardboard glasses for kids. That would be strange oh, enough, God, but the there's Google also cardboard, some extra that, weirdness that holograms that was. can interact with the physical world. We see throughout the story that this Ballora hologram kicks up leaves and causes them to swirl around. Oh, really? Oh, story, so it actually interacts with, like, leaves. Here, wedding among the colorful fall leaves. Ballora is she the spun, wind. The bright leaves were sucked into her vortex. For a few seconds, Casey admired the beauty, but then she thought, wait, if Ballora is just a picture, a hologram, then how is she affecting the objects around her? It I don't know. It didn't make sense. Welcome to the world of being a FNAF theorist, Casey. It didn't make sense. That's to get that everything in a nutshell. On your forehead. But in all seriousness, it does raise a big question. Is she actually a hologram or just invisible and the glasses are oh. somehow revealing her? It's unclear. Today I'm going to be talking a lot about but those she, weird she little details to be a hologram. that just seem so oddly specific for a book to call out that it feels like the book is trying to tell us something. And <laughs> this seems like one of them, but well, I could spend a lot of time trying to figure it out. To my knowledge, holographic or invisible animatronics haven't really been a thing yet yeah. in the franchise, so we'll just have to cross that bridge when it becomes important. Unless, oh damn it, it might be a phantom animatronic. No. Phantom no. animatronics? Is that a thing? They the real world, do they? Last point I don't know. about the story, though, is it's recurring I don't like the theme rules. of mothers and I don't know them. A lot of the backstory that we get on Casey is her troubled relationship with her mom. Mommy issues. played a big part in how her life ended up the way it did. Casey, throughout the story, is also 
also visited by an older woman at a bus station that gives her grandmotherly advice. She's saved from the police by another elderly woman. She makes amends with that saved mother and daughter police? that have a relationship that she envies. I mean, it could be me thinking too much about this. Big surprise, but it doesn't feel well, like isn't Ballora, that like Ballora the mom? is the main yeah. animatronic featured in a story about motherly relationships. Yeah, because she's theory, the mother of the family, ago, right? Two years ago, that Ballora was some sort of stand-in for Mrs. Afton. Not in any sort of creepy way. Get your mind out of the gutters. I mean, that she represents the wife that William Afton lost or divorced him or most likely that he abandoned in the aftermath of his daughter getting clawed to death by baby. I mean, just look at the song that Ballora Terrible. sings in Sister Location. Yeah, I've heard this. You hide inside your wall when there is music in my hall. Yeah. We've heard this before. Empty room. No mm. joy, an empty tomb. An empty tomb, aka oh, the so bedroom of our tragically like deceased a mom. child. William hides inside his walls by diving even deeper into his work. It's something that William's partner Henry does in the original novel trilogy when he loses his daughter and, then and he shuts dies. out the rest of the world, hiding behind his walls and obsessing over his work to try and bring her back. Yep. And so when William does this in the games, his wife is left alone and probably ends up leaving him. As such, as some sort of coping mechanism, William recreates her in animatronic form, depicting her with perpetually shut eyes because to William, she was blind to what needed to be done to rebuild the family. Blind Is that to the true? fact that his work was so important. She wanted to move on, to do frivolous things like sing and stand and dance, the walls? at least that's how he felt from his perspective. William Afton was mired in his own misery of loss. Like I said, it's a bit of a stretch and something that I've could, lately could talked be. about before, but I thought the connection between Ballora and in... mothers in this story was particularly interesting. Does that confirm Ballora's anyway, the mom? to the real story I want to address today. I mean, Step closer. It's not, that's not which a huge assumption to theories, But it's straight up confirming stuff that we've argued about for years. In it, we meet Pete, a 16-year-old who, due to their parents' divorce, hey, has to babysit his little <laughs> brother, Chuck the Chump. One day, while watching him at a uh, fight of Fazbear's Pizzeria, Pete, annoyed about having to be work. the responsible one, decides to scare Chuck a little by taking him backstage to see an out-of-service Foxy. Pete fires of... up the machine, and Chuck runs away, leaving Pete alone to get seemingly hypnotized by Foxy's performance. Good job. A performance that repeats one line over and over. You can be a pirate, but first you'll have to lose an eye and an arm. And from there, you can probably you a guess hand? what happens. Over the next few days, Pete gets into multiple accidents that put either his what eye you... or his arm in danger. A scalpel like nearly hits his eye in science How? class. A butcher knife almost chops off his hand at the store. A buzzsaw blade shoots out at him from a nearby construction site. He gets hooked in the face by a fishing line and oh. he almost loses a hand to a Chinese finger trap How? at the school carnival. Anyway, the two brothers eventually How? make amends and come to the you realization to that Pete needs to face down Foxy to break some curse. Pete rushes to Freddy's, but in his panic, he's hit by an oncoming truck and killed. Out of nowhere. It's this That's awful, random. awful reveal that you absolutely do not see coming because you feel so bad for this kid. You're like, oh, he's apologized to his brother. They have a good relationship. They have a plan for getting Pete out of this after him being brutalized for the better part of a week. He's on his and way then to close off the story and gets hit and by a truck. Just ends. And that would be where the story ends, except for one thing. There's always three stories Pete in these books. still alive. How? Kind of. We pick up Let me guess. Lost an eye and an arm. Pete's soul is trapped inside of his own dead body. Pete is an organ donor. Against his will, I might add. Thanks a lot for signing me up for that one, Mom. And they just got an emergency. Yeah, but Mom said I better or she'll take him out eye and herself. A hand. Pete is forced to helplessly watch as his body is taken apart by surgeons. Like I said at the beginning of this episode, this story is shocking. But what's even more Sounds shocking brutal. is the lore confirmation that we get in this thing. Pete's well, story any organs left after you hit by a truck. confirms for us that Foxy Bro, the older kid from FNAF 4 who repeatedly traumatizes his younger brother is before eventually donor. getting him chomped in the jaws of Fredbear, that is undeniably Michael Afton. 100% no doubt. It's something that we strongly suspect uh, for a while. Something that later evidence started to throw into question, but uh, this story, I feel like this might be the thing where people are like, you shouldn't watch this. The initial release finally clears it up for us. Obviously, there are some superficial similarities here. Pete has a younger brother who's scared of the animatronics, just like Foxy Bro has the crying child, his yeah. younger brother who's scared of the animatronics. Pete is connected to Foxy throughout the story, just Maybe? like the brother in the I Foxy. I mean, it kind of makes sense the way he's saying it. Divorced, just like it seems William and Mrs. Afton are in the game, leaving the older brothers alone to care for their younger siblings. At one point Shout in the story, the evil Pete's napkins from becoming a patron. Purple, which points us back to Michael Afton and sister location physically turning purple and lastly is that final that's a lot of connections should be dead but 
that isn't, which exactly mirrors the iconic words of one Michael Afton. Arthur, it's me, Michael. I should be dead, but I'm not. But all of it is just a bunch of weak parallels between Foxy Bro and Michael, and Michael and Pete, and Foxy Bro and Pete. Yeah. How do we know for sure that all three of these characters I don't, are connected? It's weird. One love triangle. Word, gum. People ask me a lot how I come up with these theories, and more often than not, it's small details that just stick out as off for the author or game designer to include, as though they're purposely seeding these details out there to try and signal something to us. And in this particular story, the odd character detail of Pete is that he chews gum gum a lot page four he's chewing watermelon gum while watching his brother <laughs> sweet Later, watermelon by the foxy animatronic the book makes mention of him swallowing that gum okay that's fine that's a one-off thing your mom no does deal. It. but later on the way to the butcher shop we're told that he quote hops a wad of watermelon gum into his mouth on the boat fishing with his dad he wishes he had brought his watermelon dude, gum. dude that's to me it all the time a lot in this short story enough that it sparked my fierce senses and made me flag it to look into later now obviously that's, i mean it could no just be a character trait Four, that we've seen gum games do we see a character actively chewing gum that'd be silly but that's not the only place that we see these characters at this point let me direct your attention back to the fnaf survival logbook who knew that a book with dabbing chica as an active selling feature would become the that's single the most selling feature item for lore solving of is she chewing franchise. gum for those of you who don't remember this little gem it's the logbook originally owned by mike is there like gum the on the, page, the, the helped book? us to solve for cassidy's name and wouldn't you know it but today it's also the thing that's gonna now reveal to us michael afton's true identity page 49 quote list 10 bad habits you'd like to break number one chewing gum excessively what's wrong with chewing gum clean as day pete chews gum excessively michael afton chews gum excessively pete eventually turns purple and comes back to life after being dead michael turns afton gum. eventually turns purple and comes to life after being dead pete is an older brother who scares his younger gum? sibling using Using Foxy. Foxy bro in FNAF 4 is an older brother who scares his younger sibling with Foxy. Pete equals Michael, and Michael equals FNAF 4's Foxy bro. Done. Confirmed. Another character is it confirmed? identity locked. This detail oh, has it's been locked. sitting in the logbook for years, just waiting to be used. Kind of impressive. Well done there, Scott. Well done. And this confirmation <laughs> tells us pizza. everything we need to know about Michael's motivation for the rest of the game series. He's avenging his brother's death, the one that he made happen. When Golden Freddy appearances are accompanied by the words, it's me. It is literally the younger brother it's a me, saying, Mario. it's me. I'm here to his older brother. But of course, of course, of course, it is never that easy. No, this never. This same security logbook. This thing that has been so With pivotal to solving Chica. so many mysteries of this franchise raises just as many challenges. Yep. Because sure, here Always. it just confirmed the Foxy Bro connection, but then it also has lines like these. Page 103, the party was for you. Page 75. Oh. Oh? Does he still talk to you in reference Who's to psychic he? friend Fred? Uh, page 23. Was your favorite childhood toy a plastic purple telephone? Page no. 20. What do you remember? And most troublesome of all, page 31. Do you remember your name? All of these Which questions bring, seem pointed to the that up child. Again? The party was for him. His favorite toy was the purple telephone. Fred Bear so did talk to him toy? and never to Foxy Bro as far as we know. In fact, these are the exact questions that got us to throw the Foxy Michael connection away so many years ago why would the spirit in this book cassidy be telling mike things that are very clearly true of the crying child if mike was I... indeed the older brother the entire time like this <laughs> latest fazbear fright story just confirmed for us it doesn't make sense which is why now we have to solve these last two questions what, what do you remember do, do you, you remember, remember your, your name, name? I mean, yeah, I do remember my name. It's Mike. I wrote Mike on the first page of the book, didn't I? And then cross it out. Mike never truly was my Mike. name. The question that we're left with, and the question I pose to you and that I still need time to think through is, what did Michael forget? And his how name? did he forget it? Was his he real the name? of 87 victim? Is that how he lost his memory? Did some sort of other trauma cause him memory loss? And more I importantly, don't know. is there some other strange connection between Michael and the crying child? Like, seriously, why would the book say that the party was for Michael when FNAF 4 clearly tells us that it's not. I can't believe that this is just some sort of typo or something. This book is so precisely engineered yeah. to be a linchpin in too many mysteries of this franchise for that to be the case. So it, could that connection between the two brothers be the reason why Michael's name might somehow be different? All theories for another day, my friends, but at least for so now, did he we're kidnap one more and just be like, hey, step your name is this? Is he a test subject? Looking for for so long. So I don't know. That's the reason why the story is in fact called Step Closer. 
closer, because otherwise that title for a story about a the kid losing an eye and an arm just going to be interesting. Could be big. Next time we tackle Susie and her connections Hi. to FNAF 6. In the oh meantime, boy. Remember it's that just a Food theory. theory exists as a channel and you should subscribe to it. Help us cross a million subscribers. I know that you guys can help us they do it. They already did. If you like what we do over here, then you're going to love what we do over there too. The end so of Minecraft? I'm that probably going to do the Minecraft like I said, if you're uh, about Game Theory videos. Restaurants and pizza, well, we've got episodes coming More out than likely will. Wolf, the dark lore of KFC, and heck, even today's episode about how pizza is technically a sandwich. Link is on screen. Hot right dogs a sandwich. Now. It's a channel that's given you. I haven't had pizza cool since 2016. In front of your friends and family, so no longer will they just be rolling your eyes when you talk about animatronic murder. Now you can blow their minds with, with pizza. stuff that they might actually understand and care about. So please no, I don't check care it about out. Pizza, please actually. subscribe so that way we can get closer to the one million subscriber mark, and I'll see you. He just wants another go play button. No, he, he, a million subscribers is a big deal. Now, this next video is called Confessions of a FNAF Fan. It's by Foot Affair. I believe people have been telling me to react to that for quite a while, and I think Taylor added it to this playlist. So that might be next week's video. Next week's video might not be a Game Theory FNAF video. It might just be Confessions of a FNAF Fan instead. Let me know if you want that to take the place, or next week we can do FNAF We Solved Golden Freddy. I read every single comment, so go ahead and leave some down below. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it made your day a tiny little bit better. So, uh, reason why people tell me to skip this, I'm basically the Foxy Bro is not the, the brother. Um, I think that's what that is. So what's the point of the story? Uh, what's the point of all those connections? Like, was it a red herring? Is it, or is they just not connected at all? I have no idea. Um, also, please tell me why it's not good to chew gum. Because, I mean, I, I chew a lot of gum. Like, not like an unhealthy amount of gum, but I, I chew a good amount of gum. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be reading your comments. I'll be live stream today at 5 p.m. Uh, also, um, Lackadaisy with Kirby drops tomorrow. I'm sure there's going to be comments in the comment section asking for it. And yes, I know Murder Jones is coming out on, I think, Friday or Saturday. It'll probably out like in a week or two. Uh, I just get a lot of comments of people asking stuff. Go down to the very bottom of the comment section and you're going to see a... You're probably going to see 10 comments in the very bottom of the comment section of just requesting me to react to stuff. It happens every time. That's... I must... I get most of my video ideas from the comment section, so it is what it is. I people just try to rush me to do stuff that's not possible, but oh, it's gonna be great. Uh, this was an interesting video. I'm kind of skeptical about everything just based off of what the comments told me from other videos, but I really hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully, made day a little better. Hope you're subscribed. But until the next video, take care and keep the music. We were